Yeah. Uh. We gotta, gotta rise up. Rise up. Yo. Go for broke, give everything, better yet, give your all. They don't wanna see you win, nevertheless, yo, evolve. Wanna see my demise, you can be in for a surprise. Cause the sun ain't about to set, now it's about to rise. Come hell or high water, we gotta rise up. Despite the storms of life, man, we All right, what's going on, everybody? I want to welcome you to this week's episode of the Stage is Mine podcast. I'm your host, Taryn Till. The Stage is Mine is presented to you by Double ETV. Uh, this week, it is my honor and privilege to bring to the platform uh, minister, songwriter, and author, Samantha D. Williams. How are you doing, Samantha? I'm doing pretty good, bro. How are you? Doing good. I also I forgot to mention entrepreneur, so make sure I get that yeah. in <laughs> yeah yeah how how are things going for you things are going pretty good things are going pretty good just keeping it moving and believing god for the rest right yeah i know last time uh you had moved to a new city so uh how was your transition i did i moved to um south carolina okay um a whole new state i was in virginia and um, it's been going pretty good. I did that because of the pandemic okay. and I wanted to get closer to my family. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not far from my family and um, it's, it's actually working out really good. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we'll start the show off. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So, um, like you said, I'm an author. Um, I have a few books, but um, the most recent one is my book called Suicide. And also that's something that I'm very passionate about, something that I've been working on, you know, doing some things to encourage people who battle with suicidal thoughts um, and depression as well, because it's something that I've dealt with. Um, also, I, I started a nonprofit uh, called Bountiful Heart. Uh, it's to encourage people through our giving, um, giving of our time, giving of our um finances to you know donate to certain situations like this year 2023 we're going to donate to a foster child aging out of foster care i'm also a foster mom i'm a newly foster mom so i'm uh, really excited about that i have two foster girls right now and they're they're precious um they're only like a almost a year older than my daughter uh -huh. um other than that i've just been um churching and working <laughs> Yeah. Of course, you know, I'm an insurance agent, so I do Medicare, mm -hmm. life insurance, health insurance, all of that, too. Right. Yeah. You know, first of all, with the um, being a foster mom, I know it really takes the heart of God, you know, to, uh, you know, pull on your heart to to do that. So I definitely commend you for that. Oh, um, for those you. who may not be familiar, uh, tell them a little bit about your ministry and your business as well. OK, so Bountiful Heart, um, like I said, is an outreach ministry. Um, to, and it's, I just started it this year. Um, and it's an outreach ministry to minister to people who, you know, like I said, battle with suicidal thoughts and depression. Um, what our plan is, is to reach out to different cities and states and different things like that. So this year we're doing Savannah, Georgia, because of course Savannah, Georgia is where I'm from. So that's where my heart is. So we're reaching out um, to one or two foster kids in um, Savannah, Georgia. And um, I, I, I like to think that being a foster mom is a ministry all within itself. So um, it really, like you said, it is it's a pool, you know, to let someone in your home and things like that. But at the same time, it's like I'm providing someone a safe place right. and a place where God lives. And so it means a whole lot to me. So that is, it's connected to the whole Bountiful Heart thing. Eventually we're going to do, going to do some bigger things, um, but I'll save that for next time. <laughs> but uh, the ministry, it's really built to encourage people. I remember when I was going through um, depression and going through suicidal thoughts, what triggered it? And I was just thinking about this um, the other day. What triggered it was grief. Mm. Um, it wasn't because I was just unhappy with myself, but my grandmother had died and it triggered it. And then just little things just kept happening after that, that would mm. just, it, it, it just kept, it was like the enemy was just dragging me 
mm-hmm. after that. And so, um, and then my grand, my dad died and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it was just a lot. Um, and so I say that to say it's you, it's, you never know what would trigger, you know, a person going through that, but right. after they're triggered, it's almost like it's hard to get out of that dark hole. Mm-hmm. And so I remember so many times I wanted someone to just say, Sam, just snap out of it. That, because I didn't have the strength to really tell myself. I really didn't have the strength to say, okay, girl, listen, uh-uh. you got to pull it together because God loves you and you know God loves you. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, my ministry is focused to people who, you know, are having a hard time coming out of that hole. When I, I, I told my brother um, and a few of my uh, family members, I was like, I really don't know how God pulled me out of what I was going through, mm-hmm. but he did. And I know that since he did, that I have an assignment to do. Right. So that's, that's what my ministry is all about. That's what my heart is um, in this season is to help those people, especially people in the church, because a lot of church people don't like to talk about depression and suicidal thoughts. You mm-hmm. just give it to God. No, it takes a little bit more. Right. Um, it takes a little bit more of putting yourself in the right, um, uh, what, how would you say, in the right um, circle of people. Yeah, right circle, Exactly, yeah. environment. Mm. Yeah, so putting yourself in the right environment, because sometimes mm. we like to hold on to things and to people, and sure. it's just not healthy. And right. so it takes a little bit more when you're, well, the Bible does tell us faith without works is dead. So mm. the work is you have to put in the work to get your healing and to get out. But a lot of people don't take that time. They say, oh, God, to fix it. God, to fix it. God, to fix it. No, God right. said faith without works is dead. So right. that's where I am with the ministry, helping those um, who are like myself. Mm. Um As far as my business, um, of course, I do Medicare, people who age off of uh, who age into Medicare 65 and older. Some people qualify for Medicare before then if they have had Medicaid for a while. Um, but I, I love doing Medicare and I love doing life insurance, um, pr- help protecting people, you know, because when someone passed away, it's like, what are we going to do? Wow. You know, the fact that they're gone, but right. if we don't have any finances to bury them, that's a, that's a heavier weight. Yeah, it's absolutely. like, Lord, what are we going to do? So I'm definitely there to help others um, and to serve in whatever area that I can Mm -hmm. um, with insurance and and health insurance as well um, Mm -hmm. with people who are under 65. um, If they need um, just health insurance, they can't get it from their job. They can't um, they can't afford it like we have where um, I can help them get a stipend through the government. Um, to get health insurance. So we're definitely, you know, trying to make sure people are getting help. And right. I, I'm the type of person I'm going to research and do what I got to do to try to find you what you need. So right. that's right. where I am. Okay. Now, when um, let's address the suicide thing for a minute. Um, what are the warning signs of someone maybe suicidal and how can they be um, recognized? I think it's different for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, It really just depends on that person. But a lot of uh, the warning signs are um, people who may be seeming like they're losing hope or they may have a schedule change. Like they're used to getting up at a certain time, but they don't get up that time anymore. It's like Mm -hmm. they don't want to get up or they're um, tired all the time or they're eating too much or not eating as much. Um, there's a lot of different signs that you can have, um, when you're dealing with someone who's battling with depression and suicidal thoughts. Now, um, when it comes to people who battle with suicidal thoughts, it is, it can be a person that's like cutting themselves. Mm -hmm. It could be a person like you definitely want to, I've, I've seen people who I just looked at their arms and I could tell like they were cutting themselves. They're trying to numb the pain. And, and, and that is just until they get the nerve to actually do it, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And so there's so many different signs to suicide. I'm actually a psychology major too. I graduate uh, next year. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> but yeah. um, So those signs are like, it's though I would say the, the, the main thing, is patterns when their patterns start to change mm-hmm. and they they start to change in how they talk how they talk about themselves how they talk about others 
mm-hmm. and you can kind of ask, you know, are you okay? Right. And a lot of people, they don't want to say, no, I'm really, you know, thinking about this, but you have to make it a safe place for them to be able to say, Hey, look, I'm battling with this. I have uh, friends that I can call today and say, listen, your girl ain't right today. Mm-hmm. And people need to have that comfortability to be able to say, listen, something is not right with me. I need you to pray for me. I need a hug. I need something. Wow. Yeah, definitely. You know, let's say um, there's a situation. I know a lot of times people hide those things, but let's say yeah. it's identified. We know we're dealing with somebody who's dealing with that. Uh, what can individuals do to support someone who admits that I'm dealing with that, uh, dealing with those thoughts and you know, in behavior patterns. Yeah. Some of the first things I always tell people is to go to counseling. It's okay to go to counseling. And, and, um, sometimes going to our pastors or like our, um, leaders in our church is, it's good. I'm not saying it's not good. It's good. But at the same time, going to a licensed professional Mm -hmm. counselor could really make a difference. Because these are people who who have the ability to pick those things out of you. Um, sometimes in ministry, which I've dealt with that before, sometimes in ministry, people are called to preach and they're called to minister to you. But when it comes to your mental state, they don't have that ability or that knowledge to pull those things out of you or to help you deal with it. So that's why I always recommend people go to a licensed professional um, counselor. Um, that's one of the main things I do. And I actually do that every, every year I take a little moment for counseling for myself. Um, and I encourage other people that are around me, my friends, I encourage them to do the same thing. It's just healthy. Um, but for someone who is dealing with, um, these thoughts, get it out of your head. Even if you have to write it out, that's one of the things that counselors usually recommend. Um, you can write it out and you can take it to your counseling session, but definitely, Counseling makes a difference. Also, if you believe in God, some people don't believe in God. If you believe in God, go to the church, Mm -hmm. get you a community of people. We want to bring everybody to Christ. We really do. Mm -hmm. But for some people, it's not going to be as easy as others. Mm -hmm. Um, So if someone says, says that they don't believe in God at the moment, I don't push them and say, oh, but God is, you know, this God is so amazing. And God is a gentleman. Hmm. So I'm not going to push that on a person. What I want you to understand is that the the love that I have in my heart that makes me care about you is the love that I get from God. Hmm. So that's the thing that I I encourage others to do. You know, go to counseling. Um, if you believe in God at that moment, go to church. If you don't believe in God, try to try church. Hmm. But at the same time, have you a community of people who love you and who believe in you and people that you can talk to when things are not going well. Another thing I would say is try changing how you eat because certain things can set off stuff in your body, certain triggers. You, you would be surprised how many triggers people have throughout a day by a smell, by something someone cooks. Mm -hmm. It can be something so simple. Mm -hmm. And it could trigger you to have that feeling of self-defeat or anything like that. So Mm -hmm. I encourage people to take note of how you feel when things happen, what's going on in your mind, what's going on in your heart, and make sure that you are, um, you have that community. Like I said, go to church Mm -hmm. if you believe in God and then um, counseling. And then also uh, make sure you take note of what, what is going on, why you feel, how you feel, when you feel. Mm. Yeah, I mean, basically, you kind of covered the next question, because I was basically going to ask, you know, what resources are are available for people who may be in that uh, state, but I think you kind of hit on it good, Um, you know, support groups. um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, when my father passed away, one of the things that helped me out a little bit was, um, being able to travel a little bit, but also like going to the gym oh, yeah. like working out, just kind of mm-hmm. clearing your head and just, yeah. um, you know, taking that anger or frustration out, you know, on, like the ba- on the basketball yeah. court or, you know, some, some other ways, uh, kind of yeah. being 
productive with that um you know that that feeling right right using whatever coping skill that you can come up with that makes mm -hmm. you feel better that's i mean it always helps and it leads you to a place you're not going to come out of this depression or this grief or whatever you're going through to that triggered it you're not going to come out of it right away right so you got to gradually do things to make yourself feel better yeah and uh, one more other thing if it gets too serious you can always go to the hospital mm -hmm. um in the hospital they will monitor you and things like that mm -hmm. um like just like your regular emergency room if you're feeling like oh my god this is I'm I'm about to do it. Then of course you can go to the hospital, and the hospital will monitor you, and they will help you, and they will also also give you those resources. Right. Um, and then there's a lot of um, hotlines that you can call. Yeah. Um, that will work with you, counsel you, or pray mm -hmm. with you. There's a lot of hotlines that could help you. Yeah, definitely. You know, as a communi uh, as a community, what can we do to reduce the stigma surrounding suicide and mental health? I think that's a tough question. <laughs> yeah. That is a tough question because so many people um, look at it as, you know, when a person is going through a mental health crisis, mm -hmm. they look at it as a weakness and yep. it's not a weakness. It's a sickness. Right. Just like someone is going through, um, like I had scoliosis at 15 years old, um, mm -hmm. And so that was a sickness and you could see it. Mm -hmm. You can see my spine twisted and curved and mm -hmm. it was opening up and people would look at that and go, oh my God, that hurts. Um, but a person that's battling with depression, you can't see it. So it's like, I don't think they, they're not really, you know, battling. Look, they ain't nothing wrong with them. They just, you know, they weak, just need, they just need to do, no, no, it's a sickness. Right. And it's a sickness that needs healing just as much as someone hasn't having um, sickness in their physical body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a lot more, you know, professional athletes coming out now and talking about it. And I think that's kind of, um, you know, helped some other people, you know, kind of um, identify as well. Yeah. You know, uh, what can schools and workplaces do to help in, in this particular, uh, you know, cause that we're fighting? I think that it's very important. I think some of the kids, the reason why they're acting out is because they are dealing with these things. They're dealing with mm -hmm. the depression. They're dealing with the the um, triggers and the anger and the different things that they go through. Um, they're trying to cope the best way they can, but nobody's there to say, hey, this is, you know, you can just kind of, you know, do this to mm -hmm. make yourself feel better. Nobody's there to do that. And I know schools do have counselors, um, but there needs to be more input when it comes to um, because, you know, behavioral uh, issues is considered, you know, it's a, it's literally, you know, out there as a sickness as well when kids mm -hmm. have behavioral behavioral issues. So I think that if we can ever get to a place where we are not only teaching the kids, you know, history and science and things like that, but we're also teaching them how to cope with life and to understand that mm -hmm. life may take a turn on you, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you have to know how to keep it steady. You know how you have to know your self-worth. You have to know how to pull yourself back to, you know, where you need to be so that you can move forward. Yeah. So I, I definitely believe that there should be some programs in the schools to, you know, enforce that. They need that. Some of them don't get it at home. Some of their parents never got it, mm -hmm. you know? So it's kind of hard to teach something that you don't know. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm definitely, you know, I've been, you know, thinking about that, that as well. Yeah. How can we, you know, help kids with their behavioral issues? Yeah. Because it's way deeper than them just wanting to be bad. Right. Uh, you know, I think that's a great point, you know, about programs. Um, now, what can families and communities do for those who unfortunately have lost someone to suicide? Like, how can we uh, show support to those families who um, who have lost someone that way? I think the awareness is what makes the difference. Mm -hmm. um, 
because fa I, I actually, in my book, Suicide, I actually have a woman in my book. Um, she's a part of the National um, Suicide Awareness Program. Um, and she actually talks about how she lost her daughter in my book and how she failed and things like that. So I think that the awareness makes the difference. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you think is being done from a research standpoint for people to better understand suicide um, prevention? You know, obviously you're, you know, you've took it a step farther, not just uh, from the theological standpoint, but the actual, actually, you know, go to school as well. So, but what can um, mm -hmm. other people do to better um, educate themselves in this particular area? They, that's my baby. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> but um, I do believe that there are some um, research studies that are being done mm -hmm. um, as far as um, the suicide awareness, the national program. Mm -hmm. They do collect funds just to do this research. Yeah. Um, and that's why they do stuff like the um, the suicide awareness walks. If you ever see um, like suicide awareness walks or mm -hmm. um, programs and things like that, that are um, go coming up and it says like a ASFP, um, that is the program that is set out to do the research. Um, and I'm sure there are a lot of other research and things that are going on right now as well. Okay. Do you think enough is being done right now to improve the access to, um, like, you know, mental health services for people? Mm, I, I believe, I don't believe so. I think that is after the fact is done. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to helping prevent it, mm -hmm. I don't think that enough is being done. Okay. And that's where my heart is, like helping um, people before they get to that breaking point yeah like while they're going through it and then you know and then add, like it's just done like i've had multiple people that i've known that have committed suicide yeah um, even when i was in high school mm -hmm. um i remember a young lady um and she was oh my goodness she was so funny she was mm -hmm. so funny and she committed suicide and we just could not understand. Like she was literally, literally the life of the party. Yeah. And uh, she sung in the gospel choir and everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they even say a lot, like a lot of comedians, you know, a lot of times they're so funny, but a lot of times it's kind of masking, you know, like a mm -hmm. underlining pain that they may have. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I lost two friends that, that way as well. Actually, one uh, mm. girl, uh, she was a PK, you know, she's a preacher's kid. Wow. Um, you know, what can be done, uh, Samantha, to address some of the underlining factors that contribute possibly to suicide, such as poverty, social isolation, and trauma? I think people knowing that others care mm -hmm. is what's going to make the difference mm -hmm. because it, it, feels like we're in a world that everybody just cares about themselves and everybody just cares about the next bill I can make or the next thing I can get done. And there are people who, you know, who need help yeah. and we're not paying attention to that because we're so concerned with our, with ourselves. So right. I think letting people know that we care, mm -hmm. letting people know that, we understand and you're not weak because you're going through what you're going through yeah. because everybody has triggers. We all deal with them differently. Mm -hmm. So I think us be there being a safe place for people would make a difference because yeah. they would be able to come and talk to you about whatever's going on. Mm -hmm. And then you can actually tell them it's not so bad. Mm -hmm. And I wish that I, um, I'm not going to say I wish that I had somebody to say that it's not so bad because I had to go through what I had to go through. But if somebody had told me and helped me to realize that it really wasn't that bad and that a few years later, I'm going to get through this and mm -hmm. I'm going to be happy and I'm going to um, be able to love people and not feel like I'm in this black hole. If I would have known that, oh my goodness, I probably would have came out 
sooner. Yeah. But I think the awareness and just letting, you know, people know that we care. Mm -hmm. Like you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, even though this question may, if it sounds like it's um, from a repetitive standpoint, I'm not trying to be, but what are some coping skills that people can really develop to manage their stress and get through the difficult life um, events? I, I would say um, as far as coping skills, you have to find what makes you happy and what makes you happy and healthy, not just what makes you happy. I take that out. Uh, what makes you happy and healthy. Um, and what I mean by that is you can go drinking and that'll make you happy. <laughs> but it's not healthy. Right. So yeah. I'm doing things like you said, exercising or, you know, taking a friend, y'all going out to eat or taking right. a walk, taking a walk. I love going for walks. Right. Um, just doing those things that are going to ease your mind and ease your heart so that you can think effectively because that's what it's really all about. It's about your thinking, your thought process. What are you putting in your head? Also, like those inspirational uh, podcasts. Um, I know a lot of people listen to podcasts mm -hmm. um, and things like that to help you stay, you know, built up. Yeah. And then reading your word, if you if you are a believer of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. um, and then listening to those inspirational um, things that are going to help you. So you have to find something. Mm -hmm. You have to find something to help you get to the next the next day. Yeah, absolutely. Now September ninth uh, at five p.m. in Garden City, mm -hmm. Georgia. Tell us about the upcoming suicide uh, prevention event. And how can vendors and sponsors participate? Well, what we're going to do um, this year, we're going to postpone the actual event. And this year, our focus is literally going to be on the um, foster children. Okay. So we're going to do a um, fundraiser for foster kids. I'm hoping that with um, two foster kids, I'm hoping we can get at least like 3000 each and then get shoes and clothes and different things like that. Um, something people don't really like talking about is that a lot of these foster kids, they when they come out of foster care, they go into trafficking, mm -hmm. they go into um, drugs and all types of things. And so um, it's just been on my heart that, you know, <clears throat> we have to be our brother and our sister's keeper. Mm -hmm. We have to, if something happened to me, God, my God forbid, but if something happened to me, I would just hope that someone would look out for my baby. Mm -hmm. And I know other parents may be, you know, not, some parents may not think like that, but some do. But um, those are our children. Mm -hmm. they, and, and if no one gives them a chance, then what are we going to do? Just sit there and talk about them. Oh, they're just, you know, this, this, and that, that. No, nobody gave them a chance. People took advantage of them every chance that they got. Uh, and I just, I remember just hearing the stories and just seeing, you know, with my own eyes, like some of the kids who have gone through some of these things. And it is just, it's heartbreaking. And we wonder why our world is so broken. And these kids are going through those things. They're going through depression. They're going through suicidal thoughts. They're going through all of these things um, because they just can't get a hand up. They can't get someone to say, listen, I'm going to help you. And I don't have a motive. Right. So um, that's what we're doing this year. We're doing that fundraiser. And then um, next year, we're going to throw a party. <laughs> uh -huh. We're going to do our event next year. We're going to throw the party. Mm -hmm. um, but this year, I really want it um, in my heart to just focus on um, helping a foster child and if we do get more fun funds in then of course we will help more mm -hmm. but just starting off i didn't want to put too much pressure on everyone mm -hmm. um and just say you know let's just try to help one or two and as it goes then we'll see you know if the lord will increase <laughs> uh, give us the link where people can donate the website and then also okay. um how people can um you know purchase your book as well Okay, so you can definitely go on Samantha D. Williams dot com. That's S A M is a Mary A N is a Nancy T H A 
D is in David Williams, W I L L I A M S dot com. And then you can see where um, you can donate to the uh, foster care. It's called the We Care Project. Okay. So you can, th- you can donate to the We Care Project. Um, you can do that on using that link, or you can use PayPal. Um, Bountiful Heart is the name of the nonprofit um, through PayPal. And then also for Cash App, it is We Care Project 23. And that's W E P A R E P R O J E C T 23. Okay, yeah, awesome. We'll definitely promote it on, on our end and promote it on our platforms. And uh, mm-hmm. lastly, you know, anyone that's interested in learning more about you, maybe have you come to the church, whether um, you want to get access to your book or something that your ministry is doing, or more information oh, on yeah. your nonprofit, give people those social media platforms. Um, you could definitely go on my website as well and okay. samanthadwilliams.com and then for social media I believe it's Samantha D. Williams okay. um, you have to put the D in to pull me up Samantha D. Williams um, on Instagram it is I am Samantha D. Williams um, and then you can definitely reach out to me there I'm actually giving away free free books right now so if you contact me I'll send you a book Um and that's, you know, based on us talking about suicide awareness, you know, I just want to be able to, you know, help make mm-hmm. people aware. So, yeah, yeah so on those seeds. Yeah. yeah. Well, Samantha, I really appreciate it. You know, I definitely commend you for what you're doing. Um, uh, this cause is very mm-hmm. important. Um, we didn't even talk about this, but like I said, I did lose two friends the same way. So I definitely mm-hmm. uh, think it's important to get this information out there and also, mm-hmm. um, a good friend of mine, uh, him and his wife, they are false to parents as well. So I definitely Aww. commend you for that as well. So yeah. yeah, keep doing what you're doing for sure. You're a true yes, um, inspiration and uh, also helping people with the insurance, you know, definitely yes, uh, if you need insurance, reach out to Samantha. She can definitely uh, get you hooked up. Yes, sir. I can. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the uh, podcast and I appreciate you guys for tuning in to the Stages Mind podcast. We'll see you very, see you on the very next episode. Take care. Uh-huh. I want to thank everybody for their support. Those of you that have been watching all of our podcasts. If you're interested in donating to the Stages Mind podcast, you can send that two ways via PayPal or Cash App. Our Cash App is Terry from the A and our PayPal is double ETV 101. Support this machine today to help us continue to do what we're doing. Also, if you're interested in becoming a sponsor of the Stages Mind podcast, email me today at double ETV at yahoo.com or call 334-498-5394. Thank you very much. I want to thank you for tuning in to today's program. Be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell for all things pertaining to the Stages Mind podcast. Until next time, take care. Give everything better yet, give your all. They don't want to see you win, nevertheless, show evolve. Want to see my demise, you can be in for a surprise because the sun ain't about to set.